then we're back. And I have a new colleague with me now. Uh, the next and final speaker of today is Gruhilda Severinsen. Dr. Severinsen has worked as a researcher at our center since 2014, and uh, you received your PhD in 2018. Gruhilda has a background in bioengineering and also holds a master in telemedicine and e-health. And um, your research interests are interoperability, interaction to exchange data with and between healthcare systems, and evaluation of technology-supported health service innovations. So I really look forward to your presentation, and the floor is yours. Thank you. I'm uh, Gruhilda, as uh, Erin said, and um, I will present some of the lessons learned so far from a national pilot of procuring and uh, preparing the implementation of AI for radiology in a Norwegian health trust. Uh, this is just a brief present overview of the presentation. And uh, this is the project group, which includes uh, three PhD students, three senior researchers, and two professors. We have an interdisciplinary project group, including competence in social science, health informatics, education, and political science. And the project manager is uh, Lena Silsam. Um, it's no secret that AI is developing rapidly and health is one of the areas with the greatest potential of exploiting this new technology. The rapid development is a, a response to the worldwide situation with the exponential growth in imaging requests, but a so shortage of radiologists. The paradox is that only a limited number of the AI solutions are implemented into large-scale clinical use. At least that's the case in Europe, and especially with, when it comes to the implementation and scaling of the commercially available CE-marked AI solutions. And the question why was the starting point of our project? This is a national concern in Norway. So in 2020, the Norwegian Directorate of Health initiated an investigative work to identify the possibilities and challenges of using AI in Norwegian specialized healthcare. The national initiative turned into a large scale coordination project, which comprised uh, exploring the process of procuring and implementing CE marked AI solutions. And they pointed out Vesterviken to be a national pilot. And to that end, the Norwegian Center for e -Health Research was commissioned to evaluate the procurement and implementation process. And the objective of the study is to assess the social technical possibilities and challenges when procuring and implementing CE marked AI solutions in Norwegian healthcare. Uh, and the aim of the study is to explore key stakeholders' expectations and existing organizational processes before it's introduced explore how the system is assimilated in healthcare settings and integrated with organizational processes, professional work practice, and patient care, and explore uh, pursued impacts of the system, including positive and negative and anticipated consequences for a variety of stakeholders. The empirical site for our project is Vesterviken Health Trust, one of the largest trusts in Nor Norway, located in south uh, east of Norway. Uh, with about 10,000 employees providing specialized healthcare services for about half a million people. The imaging department is organized as one department with branches across four hospitals. They have a steady increase in labor intensive imaging ex examinations, uh, and still there are no correlation between the growth in demand and the increase of production capacity. So Vesterviken defined three broad requirements when they started the procurement process. They wanted to procure commercially developed CE-marked AI solutions. The algorithms should not be learning algorithms, and they should only assist radiologists, not uh, replace them. Uh, and they defined some uh, areas to, uh, they wanted supported by AI. It was uh, CT thorax uh, for uh, lungs, uh, nodules and pulmonary embolisms and lung metastasis, MRI compute for multiple scler sclerosis follow-up, and conventional X-ray for skeletal and chest. The procurement is aligned with EU regulations for public tenders 
acquisitions and conforms to the principles of competitive dialogue. Uh, the data collection we did was conducted before, during, and after the procurement phase between 2020 and 2023, and included the, the 27 interviews with different stakeholders, and 12 of them was with radiologists. Uh, we used a formative evaluation approach for the study, and it's important to ask why such a qualitative approach is necessary. This is because previous research has concluded that implementing healthcare technology is complex and difficult, and technology implemented successfully in one organization can be a total failure in another. When it comes to AI applications, the knowledge on what is actually happening in an implementation process is scarce at best. However, we know that the technology is only partially to blame for failures. Uh, here is an example outlined in a paper from BMG Open in 2021 by Lebrick et al. They found the technology were responsible for only 20% of implementation failure of AI in healthcare, and the rest of the complications were directly linked to the lack of social technical considerations. And the picture of this iceberg is a good illustration of AI implementation. Developing the algorithms and the technical application is the top of the iceberg and the things we know well. The part under the sea is what keeps the iceberg floating and these factors we know less about, like the people and the organization, the legislations, validation, ethics, governance, and workflow. The social technical interplay is a puzzle of elements that interacts in a local clinical practice and at an overall organizational level. Formative evaluation is important to outline barriers and challenges along an implementation process to present and discuss with the project organization. And to conduct such formative evaluation, we use this non-adaptive abandonment scale-up spread and sustainability framework. For short, we call it NAS, both for the interview guide and analyzing the data. This is designed to guide and evaluate success and failure in technology implementations in healthcare organizations and evaluate complexity in a project. It's used several places in Europe, especially in the UK and the Netherlands, and includes seven categories, including the condition, technology, uh, different aspects of value, user adoption, organizational relations, the wider context the solution interacting, and adoption and embeddement over time. And you, when you map all these categories at different stages of an implementation process, it's possible to capture all parts of the process and understand the interaction between them. When EH solutions are implemented, some complexity is expected. However, it is important to understand why it happens, when to change course in the project, and how to predict what will happen further on, and when to address different issues to make the implementation a success. So uh, the, for short, the project status so far is that they have finished a long and complex procurement phase uh, uh, that lasted two and a half years, and they are now preparing for the implementation. And this was the first C-marked AI algorithms that were procured for radiology, both in Norway and in Europe at this scale. And it was very little evidence uh, and experience to lean on for the project. And they did this dialogue-based procurement process, uh, having continuous dialogue with the vendors along the procurement uh, before they provided the pro final uh, procurement documents. This was a learning experience for the health trust. Um, and this was a national pilot for implementing AI in Norway. However, the project was only financed by 1.5 million uh, Norwegian kroners. And thus, this is uh, not nearly sufficient to run a project organization for two years. And this makes it very expensive for a health trust to run a pilot since they had to finance the rest of the project themselves. And they also used a lot of time on solving legal issues related to the implementation, like the registration for sharing patient images to a third party vendor in a cloud based solution. Some of the findings uh, so far they relate to that it was more complex than expected to implement such CE-marked algorithms. There's been a shift from single algorithms to platform thinking, which was uh, made the project more complex, but it was ne necessary to raise the flexibility in the project. And it was important to consider all the complex integration, including the platform and the existing ICT ecosystem. 
it was very important to gain clinicians' trust. This includes testing and validating the algorithms and involving them closely in the procurement and the implementation. Um, and it's also necessary to balance cl clinical values and overall values for the health trust and other actors in such an implementation process. Uh, Vestrovikin, they wanted to procure a set of CE-marked uh, off-the-shelf algorithms to save time on testing and adjusting the algorithms. Uh, however, this was not as easy as anticipated. Uh, all medical devices, including AI algorithms, they have to be CE-marked. To get a CE approval, the vendor has to pass a conformity assessment that is a review of technical documentation on the safety and performance of the device. However, the CE marking does not say anything about the quality of the product. And in addition, CE mark algorithms often have insufficient documentation on whether the application work as intended in different contexts. On the website AI for Radiology, which works to increase transparency around commercialization of AI applications, 100 CE marked AI applications from 54 different vendors are included. And 64 of 100 of them had no peer-reviewed evidence of efficacy, and only 18 had publication that showed potential clinical effect, which makes it challenging to trust such algorithms. It's also a dilemma related to testing them, because one criteria for being C-marked is that the data set is static. And with, if the radiologists want to test the algorithm on their own patient population, they have to change the data set and the and it, then the algorithm is no longer static, and there is a risk that you have to make a whole new CE marking of the algorithm. Another issue relates to not having the chance to test them for a local setting before implementing them. Uh, this is a, and there is a high risk that the algorithms don't fit your work practice as well as anticipated, and you have to start a new procurement process to buy another algorithm. And since the Health Trust did not have much experience from using AI algorithms, they decided after the dialogue with the vendors to change the procurement from buying single algorithms to investing in a platform. A platform is kind of like an app store when one vendor is responsible for the platform and dialogue with a number of third party vendors in relation to validation and legal issues, financial issues, and so on. When the Health Trust use this, they can easily try out algorithms and exchange the ones that are not working as intended. And shifting from procuring single algorithms to platform solutions generates a more flexible but a more complex procurement process, since the platform includes three layers of vendors that Vestrevi can have to relate to. Philips is the overall platform vendor, however Blackford is the vendor delivering the platform solution and there is also all the app vendors delivering the different AI algorithms. And this may be challenging to define who is responsible for what in case something goes wrong. It's like when you have a self-driving car and it crashes. Who do you blame? Is it the car or the driver or the developer? In addition to the platform being complex, it has to be integrated to the existing ICT ecosystem in the health trust. This includes the radiology information system, the emerging storage system, and the electronic patient record system. The radiologists outline the importance of a seamless system where they don't have to log all in and out of several applications and use numerous clicks to make use of the AI platform. Some of them think that they will need more than one AI application, and then a seamless integration is even more important. And as you can see here, the overall impression after interviewing a radiologist after the procurement process was finished is that they are cautiously optimistic to use the AI applications. Uh, still, radiologists trusting AI algorithms is the most important precondition for adapting adaption, and this still remains for them. Uh, <clears throat> and for them to trust the AI algorithm, they have to have knowledge on and validation of the algorithm. And they have to have possibilities to test them before use to find out what purpose they are useful for and its strengths and weaknesses. And how many clicks does it take extra to use them and how much time they will save or not. And they also have to uh, see that the algorithms really improve the workflow and not just 
generates extra work. <clears throat> and there also is also a balance, especially in this project, between in improving uh, uh, the workflow for radiologists and easy benefits for the health trust. Because the bone fracture algorithm, which they are starting to implement, generates easy benefit for the project and the health trust. And low risk for the patient if the sensitivity or specificity is too low. However, this is not the algorithm radiologists would have prioritized. And they mainly see benefits for like emergency rooms and remote locations from using this algorithm. For radiologists at hospitals, this is not the area when they see the most problem. X-ray fractures is a small part of the work day and doesn't take long. And therefore they are questioning the cost effect effectiveness of really taking that much effort to, to start using a algorithm for this simple area. <clears throat> So we use a social technical approach to map the preconditions for implementing AI algorithms and the interplay between technology users and the organization. And we found that even if the algorithms were CE marked, uh, <clears throat> there were many questions to answer before starting to use them. Like, would they fit with the IT infrastructure in the health trust? What data sets are they val validated on? On, as well as how to get radiologists to trust the solution to make them start using them. Also, how using AI algorithms would influence the clinical practice was an important question. Would they replace radiologists, assist them, or just generate more work? Also, the influence on radiology education was important to discuss. If AI algorithms uh, screen out all negative findings, would the students not be used to identify them? And also what overall preconditions are important to consider, like the fact that the procurement process was a national pilot with interest at the national health governance level. Also several health trusts were included in the procurement and how should their interests be balanced with the internal interest at Westerbeke? It seems like they found a compromise uh, here starting to use a simple algorithm that generates instant value for the health trust. However, did not really solve the main issues for radiologists. Still using the algorithm and adjusting it to clinical workflow and ICT ecosystems will generate important knowledge and competence for implementing more complex ones later. So to sum up, uh, one of the radi radiologists said that when looking 10 years ahead, I'm pretty sure that a lot of radiology examination will be more or less fully automated without radiologist involvement unless there are diagnostic doubts. And they <clears throat> thought it was smart to install a platform and start with a simple, simple, rather harmless algorithm to assess how it fits with the workflow and the ICT infrastructure. It has been time consuming, but still important to take the necessary time in a national pilot for an organization to mature and set the scene to establish a methodology useful for the rest of the country on implementing AI algorithms for radiology. And it's important to identify the right actors to include in the procurement, including clinicians, different level of ICT organization, procurement organization, legal resources, and so on. And having a motivated project manager is important to keep the participant involved over such a long time. But it has been uh, very difficult to keep the clinicians included in a procurement process over two years. So now they have to work extra hard to gain their trust and enthusiasm. So what's next in the project? The technical implementation finished this week. They have started to hire clinicians in part-time positions. And uh, the first algorithm will be implemented before Easter. That's at least the goal. Uh, our organizational change process is conducted alongside with the implementation. And we will follow the implementation process, participating in meetings and conducting interviews and observation studies using the NAS framework and formative evaluation to generate results to discuss at different stages of the implementation process. Thank you for listening.